Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Our first birthday is coming up within a couple of days' time. We are so excited about that. And we have received a lot of congratulations from people all over the world. Congratulatory videos that we want to share with you. So I want to introduce our first video, Pastor Andre from CFC Johannesburg. Check out this video. Dear Pastor Donovan and Pastor Chantel and his church, CFC, congratulations on your first anniversary. My, if ever there was a time where reason would say one should not plant a church, it'd be right at the beginning of a worldwide pandemic. And what happened? Here you guys go out there in true leadership form as you've been taught and raised in a school of faith and you went ahead and did it anyway. And just look what the Lord has done. So from myself, Pastor Christine, and all of the pastors here at Christian Family Church, we just want to say, number one, we miss you. Giving you and sowing you to your own church plant was a huge sacrifice for us over here. And we do miss you desperately. But more besides, we're so glad to see what God has done in and through your lives and what He's doing with His church CFC. I'm reminded of a scripture in Psalms chapter 3 from verses 1 through 4. And this is what the Bible says, and it's so appropriate, I feel, right now on your first celebration. It says, Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say, there is no help for his church, CFC, in God. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. Thou art the glory and the lifter of my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. You guys have experienced more opposition, I think, at your initial church plant than anyone else in the world. And just look what God has done. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me. You are the glory and the lifter of my head. And that is my prayer for you, that God on your first birthday would continue to, continue to be that shield and the glory and the lifter of your head. Congratulations on your first birthday. We love you and we look forward to seeing each and every one of you and returning back to church as normal. Congratulations again. We love you. Thank you, Pastor Andre. Wow. One year already that we've been in ministry. You know, we launched the church on the 1st of March, 2020. And it's a year later and we're still going strong. The gospel is still being spread and people are still giving their lives to the Lord. And we give God all the glory for what he is doing in and through his church. Now, this morning's message is so encouraging, you know, as I was preparing this and, you know, the Lord really ministered to me as he always does. And, and I felt such an encouragement when I, when, I, when I studied this message and I hope that comes across to you like that. But why don't we pray? Why don't we get into the word and um, dedicate the service to God? So, Father, we thank you that we can have another opportunity to sit and to just study your word, that your word will change us. Lord, I ask that you think through my mind, speak through my lips. Lord, let this message be clearly understood by everybody that is going to be listening to this. Let it bring encouragement to their hearts, understanding who they are in Christ. And Father, we thank you for everything that is going to be done and accomplished here today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, family, this morning's message is simply entitled, You Win. You Win win. You know, as uh, through the years I've read through the Bible and different scriptures, I eventually got to the end of the book, at the end of the Bible. And the end of the Bible, the end of the book says, you win. It's really as simple as that. You win. The key is we need to get to the other side. We need to get to the finish line. You know, when we live lives and we enjoy certain successes in life, perhaps you've got a good job or you are owner of a business and you know your marriage is strong and stable, your children are you know well looked after, they are doing well, they're in good schools, etc, etc. When you're enjoying a good life, your family and people around you will benefit from that. Your children, for example, will benefit from the fact that you are living a successful life as a parent because you can probably afford to give them a good education. You can probably afford to give them anything that they need. But then there is 
this enemy that we have. And that's called the devil. And his job is to make your life miserable. His job, according to John chapter 10 verse 10, he simply comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus says in that scripture, he says, But I have come that you may have life and life to the full. Other translation says, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. And so we find in the Bible there's an account of, of Job where the devil one day approached God and he said, the only reason that Job follows you and worships you is because you've got this hedge of protection around him. You bless him. And it's only for that reason that he worships you. God then says to the devil, that's fine. If that's what you think, it's not true. You can test him, but you may not kill him. And there's an account, there's a scripture during the book of of Job, when you read it, where Job says, even though the Lord slays me, yet I will trust him. Even though the Lord slays me, yet I will trust him. And so family, you and I don't serve God for what he can do for us. We don't serve God because he blesses us. We don't serve God because we can rely on what He can do for us in the future. We serve God because of what He did for us. What Jesus did for us on the cross. The sacrifice He made laying down His life so that you and I can be free of sin and death. You know, Job says, even though the Lord slays me, even though He kills me, yet I will trust Him. And that is the point where you and I need to get in our relationship with God. We need to have that That utmost trust in God. You know, even if God doesn't do anything good in my life anymore, yet I will trust Him. I will serve Him. Because He's done so much for me up until this point. If it wasn't for Jesus that laid His life down so that you and I could be made free, we would not have the promise of eternal life. We will not have the promise of an abundant life. We would not have the promise of victory in this life. If it wasn't for Jesus. So we serve him because of what he has done for us. He's the good shepherd. He lays down his life for his flock. And so the reason that Jesus came and he died on the cross. Was to redeem us from sin and death. His blood was shed so that we could be free of the curse of sin and death. But Jesus' death on the cross did so much more than just give you a promise of eternal life. So much more than you going to heaven one day. It includes that. But Jesus' death on the cross promises you eternal life, but it also promises you an abundant life here. John 10.10 in the New Living Translation, I love what it says. And I want to read it to you. It says, the thief's purpose, which is the devil, is to steal, to kill, and destroy. But my purpose is to give them a life that is rich and satisfying. A rich and satisfying life. And so we can see here that Jesus' death on the cross paid for so many things that you and I should take hold of here in this life and just like a parent gives good gifts to their children they want the best for their children so too does God he wants the best for you my friend he's a loving God he's a loving father he's a good father you know the Bible says God is love God doesn't have love it's not one of his characteristics the very nature of God is that he is love. And so he wants the best for you and for me. See, friend, when someone is born into a royal family, or when someone marries into a royal family, that person gets taught certain etiquettes, how to conduct themselves in a manner that is worthy of someone that belongs to the royal family. They have to unlearn bad habits. They have to learn how to walk properly, 
how to conduct themselves properly, how to speak properly. And sometimes it's unlearning those bad habits that is sometimes more difficult than learning new good habits. And so you and I need to unlearn the bad habits, the old things, the old life before Christ. We need to unlearn those things and we need to learn how to conduct ourselves in a manner that is worthy of being a child of God. Because the truth of the matter is, when you accept Jesus, who is the King of Kings, you are royalty. And so Jesus came and he promises us abundant life and that abundant life he gives us as a free gift. But you know, because abundant life and eternal life is a free gift, does not mean that it was cheap. It cost Jesus his life. It cost him to go to the cross and to die a gruesome death so that you and I can enjoy our lives here on earth. One of victory that we can stand tall and we can overcome and face challenges that comes our way. You know, we understand that the devil is to blame for every bad thing that happens in life, every storm, every challenge that we may face. The devil is behind that. Remember John 10. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That is the devil's job. I've heard so many people though ask, but why does God allow hardships to come our way? Why do I have to go through these things? You know, I'm a Christian. I follow Jesus. I've given my life to him. But, you know, since I've dedicated my life to God, it seems like things are just going wrong in my life. You see, you've got an enemy. You've got an adversary. And his job is to make your life miserable. The good news, though, is that you've got victory in every area of your life. You can overcome every temptation, every test that the devil puts before you. Because Jesus has given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And if you drink anything harmful, it won't harm you. If you drink any poison, it won't harm you. And that there speaks about our authority over the devil and all his demons. And so we have victory in every area of your life. So the question that I've heard many people ask is that, why does God allow hardships in my life? But I want to say to you, that's perhaps the wrong question. The question that you should be asking is, why do I allow hardships in my life? Because Jesus gave you authority. He's given you all the tools that you need to overcome every sin, every temptation in your life. It's the grace of God that keeps you and keeps me. And so when Jesus died on the cross, and his last words were tetelestai. It means it is finished. Tetelestai is the Greek word that was originally used. And that word does not imply that he was finished because he was exhausted. He was finished because he was ready to give up. He was weary. But rather, tetelestai was a shout of victory. Tetelestai implies that all debt is paid. When a man's debt is paid in full, he is tetelestai. He is free. And that is the word that Jesus used when he breathed, just before he breathed his last. It is finished. And so it is complete, it is accomplished, I've done what I've set out to do. The devil is defeated. And that was Jesus' shout of victory. So when you and I accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we must understand that he did a complete job on the cross. There is nothing missing, there is nothing broken, there is nothing that Jesus neglected to do. He finished the work of the cross and he defeated the devil through his death. You know, I love the scripture in Isaiah 26, verse 3 and 4. It says here, the prophet says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. 
I love that scripture. It such a, gives you such assurance that if your mind is steadfast and you're thinking and on God and His promises and you trust in Him, He will keep you in perfect peace. And the Lord Himself is your rock eternal. The scripture once again speaks about nothing missing, nothing broken. God has done it all. So my friend, you and I need to build wisely. We need to be wise builders. You cannot build a double story house on a foundation that was laid that's meant for a single story house. That foundation is not strong enough to hold a double story house. Neither can you build a house in the middle of a storm. The house is built before the storm comes. In fact, many times in the natural when storms hit a certain area, they cannot build, they cannot continue building during those storms. They have to wait until the storm passes. And so you cannot build a house in the middle of a storm because the, the house is there to provide shelter for you against the storm. You know, there's a parable that Jesus teaches in Matthew chapter 7, where he teaches about two different houses. And the, my Bible, the title is The Wise and the Foolish Builder. Matthew 7, from verse 24 to 27. Jesus says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So what is a wise man? Well, according to Jesus and the scripture, a wise man is anybody that hears the word of God and puts it into practice. You see, the wisdom is not just hearing it. The wisdom comes in when you apply it, when you practice it. Verse 25 goes on to say that the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall. Because it had its foundation on the rock. And that foundation on the rock tells us and implies the rock is Jesus Christ. And we know Jesus Christ is the word. John chapter 1 says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Further on you read chapter, chapter 1, so I think it's verse 14, where it says and the word became flesh. And it dwelt amongst us. You see, family, Jesus and his word is one. It's in, they are inseparable. And so when this, the writer here writes that the winds blew against this house, the storms rose against this house, the rain came, but the house stood because its foundation was on the rock. It's telling you and me that the foundation is on the word of God. And then it goes on to, Jesus goes on to say, But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. So someone that hears the word of God, but never applies it in their life, Jesus likens them here to a foolish man. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew, just like it did before. And it beat against that house, and that house fell, and the great was its fall. And that's what the Bible tells us here. So the same storm came to both houses. So what is the difference? The one house was built on the doing of the word. The other one was built on sand, which is the foolish man hearing the word, but never applying it in their life. And so God's word is dependable. You can count on God's word. His word is yes and amen. If God says something, if there's a promise in the word of God, he will do it. What you and I need to do is we need to take hold of the word of God. And we need to confess and speak God's promises into our lives. God is no man that you will lie. When he says something... It will be done. But you see, friend, the application of God's word is your choice. You can choose to be like the foolish man 
that never applies the word of God. Or you can choose to be like the wise man who applies the word of God in their life. I've heard this quote recently. It says, faith does not change your circumstances necessarily, but it changes your perspective. How you see the storm, how you see the challenge, how you going to approach and face that challenge. You know, recently I uh, spoke to someone and a couple of weeks ago I spoke to them prior to the second time I spoke to them. And um, this person was going through some tough times and um, their countenance was down. And, you know, we encouraged them and just led them to the word of God and the promises of God. And uh, when I spoke to them then a week later, I asked the person, how are you doing? And they were, they were great. They were upbeat. The response was different. They, they carried themselves with so much more confidence. And my question to that person is, did your situation change? Do you still have this trial in your life? And the person said, Pastor I do. Nothing's changed. But my perspective and how I'm seeing this and I'm going to deal with this and trusting the Lord has changed. So I feel better about the, the prospects of the future. And that is what it's all about. You know, it's how we perceive challenges that we may come across. Remember this child of God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are victorious. You are a winner. God has given you all the tools that you need. Jesus is not going to come again and die again for your sin and for my sin. Jesus is not going to come again and do something that perhaps he forgot to do at the first time of coming. Remember, he said these words, it is finished. Their debt is paid. They are cleared of all sin and all debt. And I'm giving them the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 18 verse 18 says, Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. You family, you my friend, you have got the key. And so whatever you allow in your life gets allowed in heaven. But whatever you do not allow, whatever you stand against, whatever you do not accept in your life, that is not accepted in heaven. And so the person that's got the key to success in life is you. And success is not measured by how the world measures success. Success is measured by how God measures it. You see, each and every one of us have got a different story, a different path. We've got a different past. Every one of us have got different amount of talents and gifts that God has given us. And so when the parable of the master that went away and he gave his servants different gifts, the Bible says the one servant got five talents, the other one got two talents, and the one's got one talent. The Bible very clearly says each one was given different gifts according to their ability. Not because the one is better than the other, but according to their ability. If you've been given much, much will be account, have to be accounted for. And so I hope that this message encouraged you. I hope that you see yourself as a winner, because that is who you are. You're part of the royal family of God's family. Amen. So as I lean into the altar call, I'm going to ask that every head gets bowed, every eyes closed right now. I want to invite you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You say, Pastor Donovan, how do I do that? Well, friend, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'm going to ask you to pray this after me. And the Bible assures you that when you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 10 says, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, for the, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's all about confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So why don't you repeat this after me as I lead you in this prayer. 
Thank you, Father God, for sending your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me. Today, I accept you, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my heart and save me. I acknowledge that I am a sinner in need of a Savior, and I repent of everything that I've done wrong. I now ask you to forgive me, Jesus. So today, as I invite you into my heart, I thank you that your promise of eternal life is now mine. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for dying for me. And thank you for raising me up again just like you did when you died and after three days you rose again. Amen. Now friend, if you've prayed that prayer, I want to congratulate you. That is the best decision that you will ever make in your life. And we as a church, we are committed to pray for everybody that gives their heart to the Lord, every Christian out there. And we pray that you will grow in your relationship with God. Our number is appearing on the screen. So come and give us a call and send us a WhatsApp. Let us know what do you want us to pray for. You know, you may be watching this and you may be on the other side of the country. You may be on the other side of the world. But you had this encounter with God as you were listening to this message. We want to invite you. Be part of us as a family. And so congratulations. God loves you. We love you and we will be praying for you.